Good evening. Good evening, teacher. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Okay, we are in the session number three. So we are almost, almost done with this uh, course, with these sessions. We are just going to have one more and we are going to be done. So we are going to continue with the topic that we were learning yesterday. And in this case, it's related to the past tenses. And we are going to continue um, talking about the simple past because we are going to finish with that information today. Then we are going to continue talking about the other uh, tenses that we have on the past. And I guess we are going to take like um, a moment to talk about also about the future. Uh, because in this case, we are not going to talk about just um structures or in this case uh, we are not going to uh, just talk about um how to create statements in this case we are going to uh, see very specific information related to these um to these tenses so yesterday we were talking about the use of the simple uh, past and in this case uh, we were talking about uh, some words that we can use with this structure and in this case we have here the information that we were uh, like learning yesterday in which we were talking about um what is the simple past what are the uses and we have some examples um let me see, let me see, it is here. Then we were talking about the words for and since. Uh, we were saying how to use for, how to use a scenes, and in which uh, moment we are going to use these two different words. And uh, we like had some of the examples. So we have here some examples. And now we are going to talk about what are the uses or when we need to use the past simple. In this case, we have a question that it says, when should we use past simple? ¿Cuándo deberíamos o cuándo es necesario que nosotros utilicemos esta estructura? But give me a moment because I am not wearing my glasses, so it's kind of complicated for me to see uh, what I'm going to write to you, so I need to take my glasses. But give me a second. Okay, now I am complete. So I was saying that we are going to uh, talk about uh, when to use this structure or this tense. So we are going to see like, um, some information in this case is not like a uh, really long information. Uh, we are going to have like a couple of ideas related to the four different uh, tenses in past. And then we are going to finish with the past and, and we are going to talk about the future a little bit. So in this case, we are going to see just the moments or in which cases we are going to use the simple past or the uh, the tenses that we have in this uh, structure. Solo vamos a ver cuando necesitamos utilizar eh, estos tiempos. No vamos a hablar de estructuras, no vamos a, a hablar de cómo vamos a formar una oración, de cómo vamos a, a crear una pregunta, sino de cuándo necesitamos utilizar cada uno de los tiempos que tenemos en el pasado. Ya habíamos hablado del eh, simple past, ahora vamos a hablar de cuándo vamos a utilizar este, este simple past, en qué situaciones y también algunos, algunos ejemplos. Y lo mismo va a pasar con 
eh, los otros tiempos. So we have a very short information because I just have like um, different ideas about the information. So it's not going to be kind of tiring or like boring or something like that. Just we are going to have a couple of ideas. So we are going to begin with the question. When should we use the past simple? And we have a here that it says, this is the basic past tense. And we use it whenever we want to talk about the past and we don't have any special or a special situation. That means we should use the past perfect, present perfect, past continuous. As I was saying, uh, when we were talking about the different tenses, this one, the past, is one of the most used tenses in English. So this is very necessary that we use when we are talking about the past situations. And in this case, when we want to remember something about the past. And obviously we are going to use this structure or this specific tense when we are not going to use like um, moments that begin in the past and continue in the present or has different influence in uh, different situations. So in this case, we are going to talk about the past or we are going to use the past tense to uh, talk about general things. We're not going to use a special uh, information. In this case, it's related to um, general moment or general information that we are going to explain something. Okay, in this case, we're going to use the past simple or the simple past to talk about finished actions, states, or habits in the past. Vamos a hablar, y ya lo hemos dicho varias veces, vamos a hablar de acciones que ya han terminado, o sea, que ya están finalizadas. También lo vamos a utilizar para eh, hablar de estados o hábitos que sucedieron en el pasado. In this case, we're just going to talk about something that, that is complete. Um, we're going to see other like um, situations in which we can uh, use another uh, structure, but in this case, we are just going to focus on the, the idea of something that we did in the past. So in this case, um, just give me a second. A uh, second, a second. Because I'm looking for something. Okay. The first thing that we're going to mark here, let me see, I need my lists. Oh, this one, not. I want you to use this one. Finished action, I mean, not in this place. Finished actions, states, or habits in the past. Okay, in this case, we're going to use it with finished actions, 
obviously with the states or habits in the past when we have a finished time word. En este caso vamos a utilizar una palabra específica que nos va a determinar a nosotros que eh, estamos utilizando o estamos hablando de, un, eh, de una acción en el pasado. Entonces tenemos que enfocarnos en que estamos utilizando acciones terminadas y por ende vamos a utilizar palabras específicas eh, que nos determinen a nosotros que estamos hablando de eso, o sea, básicamente nosotros podemos hablar de una idea, uh, pero con la palabra nosotros vamos aclarando que sí, ya finalizó. Ok, so in this case we are going to use Finish time words. Like yesterday, last week at two o'clock. In 2003. Okay. In this case, basically, we are like um, saying that uh, we use this kind of words to represent the time in which we perform some actions. Estas palabras simplemente nos denotan a nosotros eh, básicamente cuando nosotros realizamos esa acción. Quiere decir que estamos siendo bien específicos. Eh, yo puedo decir, me comí un helado, pero yo no dije cuándo. But using these finish time words, I am specifying in which time I did this action. I ate an ice cream yesterday. Me comí un helado ayer. So in that case, I use a specific word to, to say in which time I uh, finish my actions. And we have two different examples. In this case, we have I went to the cinema yesterday. And the next one, we spend a lot of time in Japan. In 2007. Ahí está bien claro la, el, el ejemplo. Fui al cine cuando ayer. Eh, pasamos mucho tiempo en Japón en el 2007. Ahí estamos especificando en qué momento se llevó a cabo esa acción y que también terminó en esa misma fecha. Next one. We use it eh, with finish actions, states or habits in the past when we know from general knowledge that the time period eh, has finished. This includes when the person we are talking about is dead. So, en este caso, estamos hablando de acciones que finalizaron de estados y de hábitos en el pasado cuando conocemos eh, de conocimiento, cuando es de conocimiento general, o sea, cuando lo sabemos de una manera más general eh, que el tiempo del que nosotros estamos hablando ya finalizó y que incluye cuando la persona de la que estamos hablando nosotros está muerto, o sea, que ha fallecido.
Okay, in this case, we have two different examples related to this information. And we have here the first one. Leonardo painted the Mona Lisa. Leonardo painted the Mona Lisa. The Vikings invade Britain. The Vikings invaded Britain. And we have here the information, and we are talking about someone that is not here in this word. So in this case, it is necessary that we can use this structure when we are talking about people that is not here in this moment because they are there. And in the number three, we have here, we use it, um, or in this case, we are going to use these structures that are the finished action, the states of the habits, um, when we are going to introduce with the present perfect or another tense. And this is sometimes called details of news. Quiere decir que también lo vamos a utilizar cuando tenemos que eh, presentar o cuando tenemos que hacer como una o como agregar, ¿verdad? También el presente perfecto o algún otro tiempo y se le llama detalles de la noticia. That is something related to that. Now we are going to see some examples to understand what is the use of this um, structure or how to use the information in these cases. So in the first example we have, I've hurt my leg. I fell off a ladder when I was painting my bedroom. So we are uh, like telling a story or telling something new. Uh, or we are uh, talking about an experience that we are having or we had in some times. I've been on holiday. I went to Spain and Portugal. I've been on holiday. I went to Spain and Portugal. So in this case, we're like mixing two structures to talk about something that we did or some specific information. Number four. 
For stories or list of events, we often use the past simple for the action in the story and the past continuous for the background. Aquí dice que para historias o lista de eventos, nosotros usualmente utilizamos el pasado simple para las acciones de la historia y el pasado continuo para el, como el, los detalles, ¿verdad? De lo que ha estado sucediendo. And in this case, we just have one example. He went to a cafe. People were chatting and music was playing. He sat down and ordered a coffee. So in this case, the main idea here is that he went to a coffee shop or something like that. So in this case, this uh, first idea is in simple past. Then the other details are going to be in a past continuous. He sat down and ordered a coffee. So we can take this um, idea into different parts. We're talking about what is he doing in this moment. Aquí podemos ver o podemos dividir esta en dos ideas. Él fue a un café y, y se sentó y ordenó un café, obviamente, porque está en, un, en una cafetería, ¿no? Y... Le agregamos, people were chatting and music was playing, como el ambiente que se estaba viviendo o qué era lo que estaba pasando en ese momento cuando él estaba en la cafetería. So that's uh, why we are using another uh, tense to explain what is happening in back, the idea that we have in, in the beginning. Because we have like, and a subject, and then what is this subject doing? So in this case, he went to a cafe, and he sat down and ordered a coffee. And then we have just some elements that we can add to the story. And the last thing that we're going to see for the simple past is unreal or imaginary things in the present or future. But this is um, another thing, and it's not like number six. I guess. Esto es algo diferente. Es hablar de cosas no reales o imaginarias en el presente o en el futuro. But why? We are talking about past, but in this case, we are talking about also present and future. How is this possible? Well, we are going to see what is this about. Estamos hablando de cosas del presente y del pasado y, de, y del futuro. And we use the past simple to talk about things that are not real in the present or future. So we use it with the second conditional and after words like wish.
And for this one, we have two different examples. And in the example number one, it says, if I won the lottery, if I won the lottery, I would buy a house. I wish I had more time. I wish I had more time. Básicamente es cuando nosotros vemos una situación que obviamente sabemos que lo más probable es que no llegue a pasar o que es muy remoto que pase. En este caso, como lo es la, la lotería, ¿no? Es un golpe de suerte. Donde dice, si yo hubiera ganado eh, la lotería, me hubiera comprado una casa. Entonces, eh, es cuando estamos quizás viendo las noticias y vemos que ya se, alguien se ganó ese premio. Entonces, nosotros hacemos esa construcción de ese tipo de oraciones. If I won the lottery, si yo hubiera ganado la lotería o si yo me la hubiera sacado, ¿verdad? O el premio mayor me hubiera comprado una casa. Y también en el otro, I wish I had more time. Desearía haber tenido más tiempo. Quizás estábamos haciendo un proyecto, un examen, eh, alguna situación que no llegó a completarse en el pasado. Now, we are going to move to the other structure or to the other tense. In this case, we are going to talk about the past continuous. We already know that in this case, we are talking about uh, verbs with the ing form. Um, and we are going to uh, talk about the same things. When we need to use this structure. Vamos a seguir con la misma línea. Vamos a seguir hablando de cuándo es que nosotros necesitamos básicamente utilizar estas estructuras o estos tiempos específicos. So we had a question here. When we should, I mean, when should we Use the past continue. And in this case, we can also call this a uh, tense past progressive. So in this case, we're going to begin with number one. So in this case, we are talking about reasons. Reason number one. An action in the past which overlaps another action or a time. The action in the past continues to start before and often continues after the other shorter action or time. Quiere decir que esto va sobre eh, una acción que ya ha sido tomada o que ya se está llevando a cabo eh, o un tiempo, ¿verdad? También dice que la acción en el pasado continuo eh, comienza antes y a veces continúa después de algunas acciones cortas o tiempos cortos. So it's like um, something that is continuing.
Okay, in this case, we have the examples. And we have, I was walking to the station when I meet John. Pues obviamente aquí empieza, ¿verdad? Yo estaba caminando a la estación cuando, aquí se interrumpe la acción, cuando conocí o me encontré con John y luego comenzamos con otra cosa. Y comenzó, eh, primero, básicamente comenzó caminando, luego eh, se encontró con John y Luego siguieron quizás platicando un momento más y esa persona continuó caminando. So in this case, it's like a, an action that is, we can say like a uh, interval, but, but other kind of short actions. The next one, at three o'clock, I was working. Pues básicamente, las tres de la tarde, yo estaba trabajando. That's it. So in this case, means that we begin working uh, before that hour and then we continue working. Empezamos a trabajar antes de las tres y obviamente continuamos trabajando después de esa hora porque en muchos casos pues salimos um, a las cinco or something like that. Next one. Reason number two. And in this case, in the same way, we can use the present continuous for the background of a story. We often use the past simple for the action, and this is really a specific example. Okay, in este caso, cuando estamos contando una historia, vamos a hablar de las acciones. Las acciones que nosotros estamos realizando la vamos a decir en pasado simple. Para agregar más detalles a lo que estábamos contando, más detalles a las historias, vamos a utilizar el presente continuo. So, in that case, it's for background information. And we have some examples here. And it says, the birds were singing, the sun was shining, and in the cafes people were laughing and chatting. Amy sat down and took out her phone. Aquí estamos dando eh, detalles extra, ¿verdad? De lo que estaba sucediendo en ese momento. Está hablando de que los eh, pájaros pues estaban cantando, el sol estaba brillando y en el café las personas estaban riéndose y platicando. 
Y Amy se sentó y tomó su celular. So in that case, we are just explaining the background information or the background of the situation. Number three, temporary habits or habits that happen more often than when we expected in the past. We often use always, constantly, or forever here. Uh, this is the same as uh, the way we use the, the present continuous for habits but the habit started and finished in the past. This thing doesn't happen now. En este caso estamos hablando de hábitos temporales o hábitos que sucedieron eh, más que todo en el pasado. También utilizamos palabras como always, constantly, or forever. Y es lo mismo que hacemos cuando hablamos del de presente continuo para hablar de hábitos. Pero este hábito comenzó y terminó en el pasado y que no está sucediendo ni va a suceder en ningún tiempo en el presente, sino es algo que ya terminó. And we have two different examples for this um, use number three, or this reason number three. And in this case, we have, he was always leaving the tap running. And 
And next one, she was constantly singing. She was constantly singing. And we have the last one that, that is the number four. So we are going to end these reasons in this number four. And it says to emphasize that something lasts for a while, this use is often optional and we usually use it with time expressions like all day or all evening or for hours. Aquí vamos a enfatizar algo que duró por un tiempo. Esto se usa más que todo o es opcional y usualmente lo usamos con eh, expresiones de tiempo como todo el día, toda la tarde o por horas. And we have the examples. I was working in the garden all day. I was working in the garden all day. He was reading all evening. He was reading all evening. So in that case, we use these expressions to emphasize uh, in which time we uh, perform some actions. And I think we are going to end with the past perfect simple. That is like the the number three of these tenses. And I think we are not going to complete the four uh, because we are almost done with this session. So we are going to continue with this one. And it's the same thing. We are going to um, learn how to use or in, in which cases we are going to use this kind of structures. A finished action before a second point in the past. A finished action before a second point in the past. Or 
una acción terminada antes de un segundo punto en el pasado. And we have one example. When we arrive, the film has uh, had started. En este caso, eh, una acción finalizada antes de que otro punto eh, pueda suceder. Cuando llegamos, la película ya había comenzado. So, in this case, we have two different situations here. And we usually use the past perfect to make it clear which action happened first. Maybe we are already talking about something in the past and we want to mention something else that is further back in time. This is often used to explain or give reason for something in the past. Normalmente utilizamos el pasado perfecto cuando eh, queremos aclarar cuál de las acciones sucedió primero. Tal vez eh, ya estamos hablando de algo en el pasado, pero queremos mencionar algo más. Entonces, ahí es donde nosotros vamos a utilizar esta estructura. También es eh, normalmente utilizado para explicar o para dar alguna razón de algo en el pasado. Y vamos a ver los ejemplos. I eaten dinner so I wasn't hungry. Pues yo le estaba contando a alguien que ya había comido, que ya había cenado y que por eso obviamente no tenía hambre cuando me, me invitaron a salir. Maybe it could be the situation. It had snowed in the night, so the bus didn't arrive. Then it says that if it's clear which action happened first, uh, we can use words like before and after for uh, these kind of examples. And the past perfect is optional. No es tan necesario que lo ocupemos porque podemos utilizar palabras como antes o después para marcar, ¿verdad? En qué momento sucedieron las acciones, pero también puede hacerse de las dos formas. Number two, that is the second one. Something that start in the past and continue up to another action or time in the past. The past perfect tells us how long, just like the present perfect, but this time the action continues up to a point in the past rather than the present. Usually we use for plus time and we can also use the past perfect continuous. So we must often use the past perfect simple with stative verbs. Ya saben que con el, pres el pasado continuo, presente continuo, cualquier forma de los continuos, no podemos utilizar este grupo de verbos que se llaman stative verbs o verbos estáticos. Pero en este caso sí podemos utilizar esos verbos con el pasado perfecto. Ahora, en este caso estamos diciendo que eh, algo que inició en el pasado y continúa so, en, en otra ocasión, o sea, en otra acción, pero que siempre habla del mismo tiempo del pasado. El pasado perfecto nos dice qué tanto tiempo duró esa acción, así como lo hace en el presente, pero este eh, pues básicamente está en el pasado. Y utilizamos la estructura for plus time que vamos a ver en algunos ejemplos. So, let's see.
Now we are going to see the examples. When he graduated, he had been in London for six years. Next one, on the 20th of July, I worked here for three months. And the last one, in this case, we have just three. Solo tenemos tres de estas, así que vamos a terminar con la número tres. And this one said that to talk about unreal or imaginary things in the past, in the same way that we use the past simple to talk about unreal or imaginary things, in the present, we use the past perfect to talk about um, unreal things in the past. This is common in the third conditional and after wish. Vamos a volver a hacer lo mismo que en el eh, pasado simple, donde hablábamos de cosas imaginarias que podían eh, funcionar en el presente y en el futuro. En este caso, se quedan esas eh, cosas imaginarias en el pasado. And we have the examples. Ok, aquí tenemos tres ejemplos. Dice en el primero, If I had known you were ill, I would have visited you. Next one, She would have passed the exam if she had uh, studied harder. And I wish I hadn't gone to bed so late. Básicamente, aquí estamos hablando de cosas que podrían haber pasado de una forma diferente. Eh, por eso le decimos que es algo imaginario o algo irreal, porque básicamente estamos hablando de cosas que nos hubiera gustado que sucediera, pero que solo se quedó en nuestra imaginación. 
For example, in the number one, si yo hubiera sabido que estabas enfermo, te hubiera visitado. Pero como no lo supe, no fui a verte. And the second one, she would have passed the exam if she had studied harder. Ella hubiera pasado el examen si ella hubiera estudiado, pues, un poco más um, fuerte, ¿verdad? O hubiera eh, pasado mucho más tiempo estudiando. So in that case, she eh, would have passed that exam. But in this case, it's something that we just wanted to uh, happen in that time. And in the last one, I wish I hadn't gone to bed so late. Creo que esto es algo que sucede muy constantemente, ¿verdad? De que pues tenemos alguna actividad o incluso platicando con los amigos, la familia, eh, o por estar viendo alguna serie o something like that. Eh, tenemos esta situación, ¿verdad? Y el siguiente día decimos, ay, cómo me hubiera gustado no irme a la cama tan tarde. Because now I am tired and I am feeling that I need more energy to complete my day. So in this case, we are just uh, thinking about the different things and how can maybe these actions being like different in in different context. Now, we have three different tenses of the past. We completed three different tenses of the past. So we just have one more and we are going to work on data tomorrow, I guess, because tomorrow is the last session of this course. So we are going to have just one more session and then we are going to finish with this module. And we are going to... um complete the information and then you are going to be free. So uh, it's time to end this session. We are going to end this session here and we are going to see each other tomorrow on the last session of this module. So have a really good night and see you tomorrow on the last session of this module. Good night, teacher. Good night.